Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Thanks for joining in. Good afternoon. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to wait for enough people to join in. Good afternoon. Happy new month. So yeah. Good afternoon. Happy new month. Welcome to March 2023. Uh, I'm still happy to see you. I'm so happy that we made it this far. This is the third month in the year and here we are here and happy i want to say uh bless god for it so you're welcome to another live session on wednesdays every wednesdays are live sessions so my name is shoma and i'm a counselor i'm a counselor at nexi concept limited so you're welcome to joining us here uh, our live session is going to be interesting brief and very uh, informative so I really appreciate if we uh, focus on what we have to say today and if you have questions please be free to type in your questions send in your questions you have inquiries it's for you today you can ask questions so our topic today is a uh, postgraduate degree programs opportunity for third class and HND holders Hello, Pari. So I'm going to wait for more people to join us, right? Hi, Pinky. <laughs> Good afternoon, how you're doing? Thanks for joining in. Thank you. Welcome. Happy new month. Uh, I'm kind of excited. I think I don't have a choice. I just have to be excited. And I guess you just have to be excited no matter what. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, our topic today is postgraduate degree opportunities for HND and third class holders in the United Kingdom. So, our focus today is for the United Kingdom, UK. Yeah. So, you're live with me. Uh, hi. Hello. Hello, Pari. Uh, you're live with me. My name is Choma again. I'm going to say my name again. For those that know me hello for those that are just knowing me hi so this is my face i'm a counselor yes at next concept limited so i'll be t telling you what um, you need to know about um hnd having a hnd degree and what programs you're qualified to apply to for direct masters in the uk so yeah so uh we have a few schools a very few schools that accept HND in the UK. Not all schools in the UK accept HND degree holders. Yes. Uh, likewise, third class. Not all schools in the UK accept third class degree holders. So we just have a very few of them that I'll be listing uh, as we move on. Yes, that I'll be li listing as we move on. So we just have a few of them. And the thing is, for HND um, holders and third class holders, their requirement, or let me say what they are, uh, how would I put it? They are kind of a little bit restricted on like those that have a second class lower. So if you have a second class lower, you're not, kind of, you're not restricted. You can apply to other courses so long it tallies with what you have, your experience and what you studied in school. But for those that have third class and um, those that have um, HND, they are kind of restricted. No matter um, the course you studied uh, in school, you still be restricted to some certain kind of courses for some certain kind of schools in the UK. So yeah, because I get a lot of inquiries from. Um, individuals who are interested in um, studying the UK they have HND degrees uh, I get a lot of them I get a lot of third class holders and I try to explain to them that this is what you can apply for these are the requirements many schools have their own strict requirements 
they have their street requirement they have their um, standard and they are not going to bend it for anybody you just have to follow through or I don't know so for the schools that uh, accept um, HND we have um, about five schools that accept HNDs and they are I'll be naming their names hold on please so their name is Bangor University Bangor University yes Bangor University accepts HND so if um you want to still go to the UK for a direct master's you can apply to Bangor University yes they have an initial deposit of 3,000 and um, fees of 16,000 pounds yes now back to what I was saying about uh, HND holders and third class holders now for these schools I'm about to list they are only restricted to business courses business related courses those are the only courses they can apply to doesn't matter if they uh, studied engineering or they studied uh, um, uh, uh, biochemistry or education no matter the field you're coming from so long you're going for a direct master's in the UK you are going to be only qualified to apply to business courses strictly business courses there's no two ways around it. And then uh, we have schools like Bangor University for HND holders. We have Sheffield Hallam University. We have um, Edinburgh Napier University. So we have um, schools like University of Northampton. And we have Northumbria. Now these schools are the schools that accept HND for a direct masters. These are the schools that accept HND for a direct master's. And uh, with a direct master's, you can go with your family, you can go with dependents. So that's the good thing about it. So you can still um, relocate with your family while you're in school and still study what you want to study. There's still a chance for you. But the schools are just limited. They are just limited. So, um, I will name the schools again for for HND before I go over to um, third class. So, welcome Career Life Hack and Saints. Welcome Josh. Welcome. So, uh, like I said, business courses are available for HND degree holders, and you have business management, uh, international business. Um, international business MBA you can see all the courses I'm mentioning are just business 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 now for Northern Bra, we have um, MSc business management and their fees their tuition fee is 19,000 mm pounds -hmm. 19,000 pounds and their deposit is 5,500 pounds the initial deposit is 5,500 pounds yes so what is an initial deposit? This is the money you need to pay down before you go to the next step. Now you get to pay this deposit after you have been issued an unconditional offer. So once your unconditional offer has been issued to you, then you can go ahead and make payment for your tuition deposit. Sometimes you can still go ahead and make payment for your tuition deposit if you have a conditional offer. Now, if the conditions you have been asked to provide is something you could easily get, they won't stress you, you can easily get within a day or two, we do advise that you go ahead to make a um, deposit for your tuition. Once the school sees you start processing payment, they easily issue your unconditional offer, right? So, um... Uh, that's for Northern Bar University and for most of the universities in the UK, majority of them, you have to make up 50% of your fees upon enrollment. So it's not about paying your deposit. You still have to make up 50% of your fees. So what is 50%? What, what do you mean by 50% of that? Your fees, right? Slashed into two. 
for Northern right now it's 19,000 pounds, right? Then um, how much is, pardon me, I have to use the calculator, please. So if you want to pay 50% of 19,000, that's 885, eight, I guess, but let me confirm my calculator. 19,000, okay, that's 95. That's 95. So you expected to pay 95. So if you say, okay, I don't have the 95 now, I just want to pay the deposit. And before I enroll, I will make sure I balance up. Now I said the deposit was how much? 5,005. So that 95 minus 55. That means you still have, before you can enroll, you still have to make up 4,000 pounds before you can enroll. This is how it's been calculated. But if you have the whole 50% at once, better you just hate for those that are still interested in going to the UK this September 2023 please you can send in your you can send in your uh, documents inquiries we're here to help you there is still a little time schools are really closing up fast like very fast and you don't want to be left out they say if you miss sep September it's still 2024 January right so, so the next call I'll be talking about is Northampton, right? I'll be talking about Northampton. I'll talk about their fees and so on and so forth. So for Northampton, their fees is a... Uh, hold on, please. Their fees is 16,500. Still business courses I talked about, international business management, still business courses. And their fees is about 16,500. It's, it's cheaper than November, right? It is cheaper than November. And their deposit is still 5,000 pounds. Now this school I'm mentioning are schools that HND holders, holders can apply to. I said Northumbra, I said Northampton. Now for Northampton, you can apply to MSc International Business. The deposit is five thousand, and their fees is about sixteen thousand five hundred pounds GBP. So um, for this school too, you still have to make up fifty percent upon enrollment. So with this um, course, you can go direct for masters. You can go with for those that want to go with their families. You can go with your families. For those that want to go alone, you can go alone. It's not a problem. But always have it at the back of your mind that you have to make up 50% of your fees. No two ways about it. So I would say start saving up money now. It's better you get the money here, to be honest with you, before you get there. Except you are sure that before enrollment, the money will show up and it's fine. So for Northampton um, International Business, uh, 16,005 pounds, deposit of 5,000. Don't worry, I'll talk about third class. Let's finish with h &D. One step at a time. So the next school I'll be talking about is Sheffield Harlem University. You ought to have heard about this school. It's a very nice school. They're all nice schools too. So Sheffield Harlem University can apply to MSc international business management uh, their fees is 16,385 pounds 16,385 pounds for Sheffield Hallam University and then um, their deposit very affordable it's 2,000 the deposit is 2,000 pounds I know you like it like, hey, it's cheaper yeah it's 2,000 pounds but you still have to make up the same 50% upon enrollment. So yes, it's £2,000. This school closes very fast, so you have to be fast about it. Many schools, many people are rushing Sheffield Hallam, to be honest. But who doesn't want something cheap? Who doesn't want something um, affordable? Oh, Dufain, I'm sorry. I'm focusing on H&D and third class today. Another day for second class, Lua. <laughs> So, uh, like I was saying, for HND, the third school on the list is Sheffield Harlem University, and they have a tuition deposit of two thousand pounds. They have a tuition fee of sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty-five. So, don't forget, you still have to make up fifty percent upon enrollment. No two ways about it. 
it's something we just have to have uh, at the back of our palms that yeah we have to do this is a compulsory thing is a compulsory thing so then the next school on the list is um the next school on the list is bangor i don't know if i've talked about bangor Bangor University. So you have international business, you have international business MBA at Bangor. Yeah. The tuition fee is seventeen thousand pounds and your deposit is three thousand pounds and you're still expected to you're still expected to uh, make up fifty percent upon enrollment. Pari uh, Ferris today's about UK, it's not about Canada. I'm so sorry. So for Bangor University, you can apply to international business, you can apply to international business MBA, so long as business related, right? So you have £17,000 for their tuition fee and uh, £3,000 for their deposit. So it's either you pay your 50% before you get there or you make up your 50% when you get there. So I said how to calculate this fee is divide your tuition fee into two that is a 50 percent so if you want to pay your 50 percent then it's all good now 50 percent of seventeen thousand. it's eight five let me cross check again so seventeen thousand. my math's still good so it's 8,005, that's 50% now, I'm talking about Bangor University. Now if you have the 50%, um, if you have the 50% right now, you can pay up. But if you don't have the 50%, say you want to still pay just the deposit, which is 3,000. So you'll be left with 55, five, right? Just know that it's 55, five, you still have to pay before you enroll. Now many schools have different payment plans after your first 50% has been made, right? Some schools, you um, pay two months later for the next installment like you you pay your 50 percent in september right i'm talking for september because that's the next thing take then you expected to pay your next payment in january right but obviously you're not going to pay the whole many 50 percent in january but there's a way they slash it so um when you get to school you get to know how many instruments you have to pay right so after like two to three months after your first installment has been paid you expect to pay another installment so it's the remaining 50 percent is actually spread across your study everything still depends on your school the financial department you can go talk to them and see how uh, you want to pay your fees explain to them and everybody has their ways everybody has their rules you get to see their rules some could like listen to yours and tell them you can tell them how you want to pay your own if the school is flexible and all, they may okay agree to your terms. But if they are strict on their terms, if they're strict on their terms, then you just have to comply. So most of these courses are twelve months courses are for a year. They're not two years. They're not two years courses. None of them is up to two years. So all the courses I've um, mentioned are not two years. Then the last school I'll be talking about for HND is um. Edinburgh Napier. Am I pronouncing it well? Edinburgh Napier. <laughs> Edinburgh Napier University. So you still have MSc International Business Management. And you have tuition fee for of like sixteen thousand. And the deposit is about um three five pounds. Same fifty percent upon enrollment too. Same fifty percent upon enrollment. So if you notice, all of them all have 50%, 50. Now this 50% is not because you have an HND, that's why they are telling you to pay 50%. Even those that have first class, even those that have 2-1 and 2-2 are two, two, expected to make up 50% of their fees before they can enroll, before you can start classes, you understand? Before you can start classes and all. So you still have to make up for that 50%. So it's not because of your degree or the particular degree you are holding. So for those that are joining in, the topic today is the postgraduate opportunities for HND and third class holders in the United Kingdom. That's the topic. And my name again is Choma. So the next um, set of holders I'm going to, I'm shifting now to third class. 
So I've been talking about those that have third class in the UK. Schools that accept, I think there are more schools that accept third class than HND though. So yes, these schools do that accept this HND, they, they do accept third class too. So I'll just mention all of them again. So for third class, um, the first on my list is um, Birmingham City University. Yes. Birmingham City University, um, we have MSc Management and International Business. Yes, this course is actually available for third class, but the difference between this course and the regular course is that for third class, it's for 16 months. But for the normal people that have, like normal 2-2 uh, and 2-1, it's 12 months. It's 12 months. So, um, their fees, they have a fees of £16,870. I was about saying Naira. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so they have a deposit of £4,000. They have a deposit of £4,000. Yes. You have to make up 50% upon enrollment. You have to make up 50% upon enrollment at Birmingham City University. So if you have 50% pay now, fine. If you want to get there before you make up your 50%, also fine so these schools are still open all these schools i'm talking about are still open so you can send in your document don't worry i'll give you a bonus i'll tell you the documents you need to send right so we can begin the process because i only believe some people are just kind of new here they don't really know what documents um, they need to submit msc management and international business so some people don't know what document they need to submit so i'll talk about that so we have a um, international MBA in the same school. So if You can go for international MBA. So these courses are not the normal 12 months courses. They are longer. They are longer. You have for um, 16 months. Yes, for Birmingham City University, it is 16 months. Whether it's international business, international um, MBA, or management and international business. Now for these schools, I would say they only have September intakes for those that have third class and so if you don't have, have, apply in September it's your next year September that's so long that's more than a year I believe you want to go to the UK this year right mm -hmm. so if you miss this chance now still next year and so long like we're just in March right so you don't want to miss it so for international MBA at Birmingham City University, it's still the same um, 16 months. So the same fee, 16,870 and uh, 4,000 pounds for the deposit. It's a very good school. It's in Birmingham, the heart of UK. I don't know if you've heard of Birmingham. It's a very good school. I think you should check it out just after this live. Um, for Birmingham City, their payment plan, so after your 50% upon enrollment, the next um, payment you have to make is in, in um, January. The next payment is in January. Yeah, so just have it in mind. After you pay in September, you have to pay another money in January. So they, they, they slash it for you, like I think two or three installments. So, but the first installment, after your main installment you made in September is in January. So, hold on. Then another school we have is um, University of Sunderland. Yeah. So for University of Sunderland, it's um, extended masters. They call it extended masters. So I'm going to bring out the fees for you. 
and for their fees it's uh, it's sixteen thousand eight hundred and thirty five. Sixteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-five pounds, and their tuition deposit is three thousand five pounds. You are also expected to make up fifty percent upon enrollment for Sunderland. So um, this course is not the normal twelve months course. Excuse me, it's fifteen months also. You can see it's extended master. The normal masters that we know about. For business courses, is usually 12 months, except to one professional placement. That's about extra six months, making it 18 months. That's for those that have two, 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 one. But for third class, is extended masters at University of Sunderland, and it's for 15 months, and the fees is 16,835. Deposit is 35. So that's for third class. Then in next school, I'll be moving on to. I will take your question soon. Next school I'll be moving on to is um, University of South Wales. The University of South Wales they accept um, third class degrees, but sadly, um, they are really people are rushing to school like back to back. So if you're not fast enough, you may miss out on it. So their fees is. From fourteen to fifteen thousand pounds, and uh, you're expected to pay fifty percent of your tuition deposit. You're expected to pay fifty percent of your tuition deposit for University of South Wales. Yes, you just have to make up the fees. So for the fees, you can say uh, fourteen thousand nine fifty for MSc management. Then you pay your fees, your deposit. Then you pay the deposit of. 50%. So half of that 14,000. That's 14,950. Let me do the calculation for you. So 14,950 divided by 2. So you're expected to pay 7,475 pounds. That's their deposit. 50% straight up. Then the next school I'll be talking about is. Hertfordshire, yes. Hertfordshire is a wonderful school also, a very, very wonderful school. They have um, MSc management, MSc management for third class. Now these schools, these schools like Hertfordshire, uh, South Wales, Birmingham City, Sunderland, H and &E degree holders can apply to these schools. This is just for third class, just for third class. So, we, like I said, we have um, Hart for Share. You can apply to management, MSc management, £15,450. The deposit is 5000 to still make up 50% upon enrollment. Yes, to make up 50% upon enrollment. Another university that accepts third class and does not discriminate is Coventry University. I will answer your question, uh, Miss. Vivilaski, very soon. So Coventry University uh, accept third class too for MSc International Business Management. For MSc International Business Management, their fees is about eighteen thousand nine hundred pounds. You have to pay four thousand pounds and fifty percent of your fees for enrollment too. So. Uh, which other investors in the, in the in the group? Yes, Edinburgh Napier to take third class. Edinburgh Napier University. You know, I mentioned Edinburgh Napier for the change years. They also take third class too. So if you have third class, you can apply to Edinburgh Napier University. For their fees is about sixteen thousand and seventy five pounds. Sixteen thousand and seventy five pounds, and their deposit is about three thousand five hundred pounds. Yes. So these schools are self third class. And those schools I mentioned earlier too, for HND, North Umbra University, Northampton, Sheffield Hallam, Bangor, and Edinburgh Napier, they also take third class. So you can see the list for third class is a bit lengthy compared to the list um, of third class, the list of schools for HND holders. So there's a catch here. So for example, 
you studied engineering back in school and you don't want to do anything in business. You don't want to do anything, you just want to continue and maintain um, what you studied. You can go for a pre-master's program. So I'm talking about those that have H and HND orders and third class. See, you don't like the business courses they are giving you. Oh, you cannot for a pre-master program. Now a pre-master program uh, is a program specially designed for international students, right? To provide provide them with strong foundation starting before they start their postgraduate degrees. Now it's a program that is for international students that gives them a strong foundation before they can progress to the main master's program. Right? So this could be 18 months like the whole program together and if you add it to your master's it's very lengthy it's up to two years right so the good thing about it is that you can go with your family if you opt for a pre-master's program you can go with your family uh, but the downside to it is that it's more expensive than the normal direct master's program so it's up to you do you want a pre-master's or do you want a direct master's that you just have to be restricted to business courses and that's why I want to ask him, why is it just business courses? Why can't you just accept me with the course I want? Okay, in rare cases, it still depends on the school. In rare cases, um, a school might choose to want to consider you if they think that you have enough experience, over five years experience in relative field that you want to apply to. Say you want to, you studied um, computer science, and you want to go for computer networking or cyber security for masters, but you have a change, right? And you study computer science in, in um, school, and where you had your HND degree, you don't want business courses. Now, some schools are lenient enough. This depends on the school. It's not like a guarantee. They may say, okay, for them to consider you, then let them see the kind of experiences you'll be able to gather over the years. If you have less than five years experience, there's no way they will. There is no way they will accept you. They will tell you to go and do business course. But if your 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 um, experiences are thick enough, there's something that is related to your course of study. The school might bend for you. They may be like consider you, but it is not a shorty. I'm talking about some schools. If you ask me which school in particular, I'll tell you I can't pick point a school for you. Right. I can't tell you oh, this school will take you with your HND degree. That would mean it's leading you, but it happens. I said you want to take that try yourself. Okay. But well, if you come to me, I tell you, as so long as you're a HND degree holder, you have third class, just go to the business management field and do your master's. And maybe when you get there after your MSc, you may choose to change career path. You may choose to do other short courses when you get there. Nothing wrong. People do it. You can switch careers when you get there. But notice what I'm saying. When you get there. So for IELTS, someone is asking if IELTS and transcript is needed. Yeah, for transcript, very needed, very compulsory. For IELTS, if you have your wife and you have a minimum of C6, you're good to go. If you have NECO, minimum of C6, you're good to go. But all the schools I listed, they not all of them take NECO. Like for Birmingham City University, they don't take NECO. But, but the rest schools take NECO. They do wire, they do NECO. So long you have nothing lesser than C6, you are good to go. You don't need your ILTS, right? But if you don't have NECO, you don't have wire, then you need an ILTS. You need an ILTS. Uh, for your transcript, you really need a transcript, an official copy. A student copy will only give you a conditional offer. A student copy will only give you a conditional offer. But... If an official copy of your transcript is good to go for you. So let me list out the documents you need for this process for those that are newbies here. For those that don't know my name, my name is Choma. Yeah. So um, the first document you'll be needing for this process. So you need your, if you want to get unconditional offer, let me start that one. You need your degree certificate, not notification of results, not statement of results but degree certificate now second document you need is a transcript very important so you need an official copy of your transcript now for those that have that went to the polytechnic right you need to provide 
your ND certificate, your ND tr um, transcript, your HND certificate, and your HND transcript. Very important. You cannot you cannot just present only your HND degree certificate and transcript and be like, okay, it is okay. No, you have to get everything from the start to finish. So the next document you'll be needing to provide is your WIEC or your NECO that has a minimum of C6 in English. Take note in English, a minimum of C6 in English. So if you don't have this, the same requirement. Every, every other school has the same document requirement. So if you don't have um, C6, then you get an IELTS. Then the next document you'll be needing is an updated CV, not an abandoned CV, an updated CV. Not a CV that says that you stopped working last year, a CV that says you stopped working five years ago. It's not updated. We need a working CV, a CV that shows that you're still in the system, that you're still working, you have something doing. So it's a CV that is still reading present till date, that kind of CV, well detailed CV. A very, I know what I'm saying, putting emphasis on CV. Well detailed CV is very important. Now in your CV, you're expected to what? Put your job role after writing the name of your company, right? Okay, you are, for example, you're a counselor like me. You don't just stop at that. You have to tell me your role, what role do counselors do in that organization. So you have to outline them, it helps. During the application process, we need all this information. So you need an updated CV. You also need um, international passport. You cannot start any application to the UK or even any other country without international passport. We always need the information on your data page. We always need your passport number. Want to know when it, it was issued. Want to know when it's going to expire. Want to know where you got the passport, where place of issue, uh, where, where, where you got your passport. Is it in Lagos? Is it in Abuja? Is it in Calabar? Is it in... You get what I'm saying? So we need that international passport. A valid one. Not expired. A valid international passport. Then another document we need uh, reference letters. Need reference letters one from your school that's your university or your polytechnic and the other from your workplace so it's more preferably um this is more preferable if you bring a work reference from the recent place you're working but if you don't have you don't you can't get from the recent place you're working you can actually get a reference letter from the previous place you've worked now, one thing you should take note about in your reference letter, you ought to have, your reference letter has to have a wonderful body, right? Let it be well written. It's, a let, it's supposed to be a letter-headed paper. Letter-headed paper. Then um, it has to have the referee's contact, email address, and position. It helps. Because when doing applications, there, there, there are spaces, sections where we need to fill in these information. That's why we like emphasizing that this information be put into this reference letter. So it's just like it to whom it may concern. I would say you don't necessarily, except you want to, you don't necessarily need to address it to a particular school. Because if you address it to one school, you can only use it for that school. But if you have it in mind of applying to multiple schools and you address one reference to one school, you have to do more references for each school. So it's up to you on how you want to do it. Then uh, what other documents have I talked about? Yeah, I mentioned certificate, official transcript, CV, international passport, WIEC, NECO, or ILTS, reference letters. Then, personal statements, aka SOP, statement of purpose, letter of intent, they are all the same family. It's the same thing as personal statement. You need to know how to write a very good personal statement. It's an essay, it's not a letter. So when drafting a personal statement, you don't draft it like you're drafting a letter. You don't need an address there. You don't need your address or the person's address or the school's address. It's just an intent of why you want to go to the school, why you chose that course, why you went to, want UK. There's some things that are supposed to be inside your document, in that personal statement. After a little brief biography about yourself, a brief biography about yourself, then you talk about your work history. Mostly if your work experience links or aligns with what you are going for 
the course you are going for then you can talk about that particular work uh, experience you've got that aligns with the course if your work experience doesn't really align with the course you are going with like in your cv you have all that experiences you've got but doesn't align with your course i don't think there's ne it, it is necessary for you to mention it on your sop but if your experience is aligned with the course you are going for for masters please include it there you need more points so after giving yourself talking about a brief giving us a brief and um, uh, biography of yourself you go ahead to talk about your country you cannot write a personal statement and you're not talking about uk it's uk you are going to you have to tell the school why you chose that country there's so many countries in this world right that offer good education so why uk so you cannot write a personal statement an sop letter of intent without talking about uk it's very intro it's very important over important very necessary so you talk about uk there are some things that should interest you about uk if you ask yourself why do i want to go to uk there's something that should be there i want to go to uk because of this and that there are things you can write there right then the next thing you talk about in a personal statement is your university for example you are going to university of south Wales. you will not even talk about south Wales in your personal statement it's not good so you have to do your own personal research on the school its location and what you think you know about the school so when you think you, when you write some things a few points about the school then you go ahead to talk about your course the course you chose to study why do you want this course what do you think is what interests you most in this course now when talking about the course you're expected to go you also talk about the school the course module so many schools have their course modules on the school's website when you click on the course right you get to see the course in depth the overview the course structure you find the course modules there so you get information they can write about two or three your sop then they also want to know what that degree will do for you after you acquired it in future what career path how is it going to be of relevance to your career path so you just put those little little points it's not hard just a little little point there and your conclusion and that's it the sop is ready it's not hard it's just an essay like of about minimum of 500 words so with this document i listed your degree certificate official transcript why can't you on echo international passport updated cv and reference letters plus personal statement you are good to go to apply to the uk now in cases whereby you don't have your certificate ready yet but you have your statement of result notification of result you don't need to worry we can still use that to apply for you but you can't get an unconditional offer with that document the school will always want to see a certificate so but we can use it to get a conditional offer for you that is sure so if you don't have an official transcript but you have a student copy or you don't have a transcript at all you can still apply but the thing is you'll only be getting a, a, a conditional offer instead of an unconditional offer until you meet up those requirements of getting the right document before you can be issued an unconditional offer so that's how it works so for those two we can use statement of result or notification of result we can use student copy or even if you don't have for transfer you don't have at all but you know that you must get them no two ways about it you must get them so for your passports, please let it be valid. Let it be valid. Yes. For your passport. Then for your wear printout will give you conditional offer. The real wire certificate is what we need. You have a scratch card, it's a plus too. So some schools um request for English proficiency letter. Right? Some schools do that. Not all schools, but some schools will tell you to get an English proficiency letter. So you can add that to your requirement, but it's kind of optional, it depends on the school. So these are the um, informations I have about third class and um, HND degree uh, holders in the UK. So Ms. Vivi, you said, do you give assistance in terms of guidance to people that got conditional offer? Yeah, we can convert you. If, you, if you've not paid your fees, why not? Just send us a DM. We got you. We are here to help. So long you've not paid your fees. We can still do something about it for you. So yes, we can assist you. We just we can convert you to so work with us. Then which other questions? If you have questions, please you can start sending in your questions. 
So, Lord, no, I don't know if I was able to answer your question about the number of or the list of documents you need to provide for a master degree program in the UK. So I said these courses are not two years; they are mostly twelve months, fifteen months, sixteen months, and so on and so. So, are you Victor M. M. Feely? Okay. <laughs> I said business courses. How about engineering courses for University of Northampton? So the engineering courses. Is it? Are you a HND holder or third class holder? So because this uh, live today is just for HND and third class. So if you're a HND person, it's business. So it's third class. It's business. Sir. Except you want to go and do pre masters, I want to continue your engineering line. Then you can do a pre masters at University of Northampton International College. But well, take note that it is longer, it's not going to be 12 months. You have a fee for pre masters, it has its number of semesters sometimes three, two, and so on. The semester can be as long as six, three to six months, so you can have to do the calculations. So it's long then you do your master's after the pre master So if you want that, we can do that for you. Just tell us what you want. Just send us a DM, right away. Anything you want, we're ready for you. So, I am saying, she said, please pay 50% and pay the balance where. When you get to the UK, you many 50%, the school will spread it. Every school have their own kind of payment plan, right? Some schools, two months after resumption, three months, you pay the next money, but it may not be the whole 50%. It may be like, that 50% may be divided into three, be divided into two. Everything depends on the school. I hope you understand me. Uh, so, please, if you have questions, please, please send in your questions. I'm here to answer all of them. I'm here. It's really nice seeing your faces. It's a good way to start the month, like Instagram Live with my family yes you're my family uh the first of march it's wonderful you guys made me smile i feel there's something to smile about so yeah I'm, you're the reason i'm smiling oh so you're the reason i'm smiling so uh you have a pass in hnd what do you advise with a pass uh, you can't go for a direct master's with a pass, you can't go for direct masters. Maybe you can opt for a pre master program. Yes, you can go for pre masters, but a pass direct masters is not feasible. No, so you go for a pre masters program. Yeah, you'll be able to go ahead to the UK. So, if you still have families, you can still go with them. So, it's still good, nothing to be worried about. Something I wanted to add is that even if you have, you are going for business courses and you have experiences, it helps. It gives you more chances. It gives you more points. It gives you more chances and more points um, in the market. So there's so many people. Just know that we are not the only ones in Nigeria that are applying. No. They have Asians there. They also want to leave. So the competition is high. It's not something you need to relax. Like, okay, I'm not going to apply now. I will apply when it's May or June. Schools may have closed though. If they've closed, you have to apply for next step. So just have it in mind that we are not the only ones applying. We have other African countries. We have Ghana. We have other African countries that want to study abroad to just like us, right? So the earlier the better. The documents you have, send them. Right? Just send them to us and we'll put in your applications for you. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. So we follow you through the process, we guide you through the process. And another additional thing I want you to notice, 90% of these schools, if not 98% of these schools, conduct something they call credibility interviews. So you have it in mind that you're gonna still be interviewed, but you don't need to worry. We conduct mock interviews for our applicants. So it means we have something like a past questions or questions that likely questions that you're likely to be asked during the interview. So before your interview day, we will interview you on our own. We will teach you. You will do your reading, you do your research, then we work at together as a team. We teach you on how to answer questions and guide you through the process so that on the D day like this, 
we are ready for them so that's how it is if you have more questions here trauma is here to serve you i work for you guys i work for you you've been amazing i want to say thank you i pray that this month will be filled with blessings upon blessings and the mercy of god will be upon each and every one of us including our families i want to say thank you for tuning in i still have eight minutes before i leave this place till when we see you again next week wednesday but i didn't think it would be me but it'll be one of my beautiful and handsome colleagues that will be on live next week so if you have questions i can still take questions though so please don't be shy drop some questions and here i'm in the question and answer mode so i still have seven minutes so i'm not gonna leave here to this one happy new more justice so to this one you are leave this place so i can still take questions you have questions you have inquiries i'm here the topic today was um service today was third class hnd degree holders the opportunities you have to study in the uk right so if you have hnd don't worry you don't need to worry at all you can go for direct masters we have third class man it's not the end of the world you can still go for direct masters you can still leave this country you can still be happy at the end of the day so we have programs for you guys business 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 and management Really, hey, why are iPhones? Are you really? Are you for real? <laughs> okay, you want to go to Afghanistan? <laughs> no, no, we don't work with Afghanistan. <laughs> Today is for UK. <laughs> we don't have any partnership with Afghanistan. Sorry, <laughs> just UK. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, it's just UK. Oh, please come and go to UK. The door is open. Like, the door is very open. Just bring your document. We are here for you. If your wife that wants to go, fine. If it's you, your sister, your brother, every, all of you are welcome. Please, send me your document, please. I'm so excited to see everybody. I, I think you guys lifted my spirit. I was kind of dull this morning, but I'm happy I'm happy now. Oh, sorry, Mr. Yomi. What question did you ask? Uh, please, can you ask the question again, please? Okay, you have H and D upper credit for seven years in banking history. You're good to go. Why not? You're good to go. Business, it's business related course. You're good to go. Mm, I can't, your 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 CV should be thick enough. Yeah, you're good to go. You can apply for a direct masters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions? Five minutes more. I'm not going to leave this place. So I'll keep on smiling at everybody until you have questions for me. So when it's one, I'll go. And yes. So please, those of you that are not following us, Fasha follow us. Please follow us so I get updates. Tell your family members to follow us, your friends to follow us. Get updates, legit updates on any application process to the UK or in other countries to work with like Canada, Ireland, US, yes, and Australia. But today I'm talking about UK, so you're only allowed to ask me anything related to UK. Happy new one, <laughs> Happy new one. <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. So follow us. So yes, we have a branch in Abuja. We have a branch in Abuja, Lagos, and Port Harcourt. Yes. So we got you everywhere, we got you covered. So if you want the address, you can easily just send us a DM. We can send you the address of our Abuja address. If you want address for Port Harcourt, we can send you that too. Just DM us and we respond to you immediately. Yes. So I believe we all have the information. We know what course to apply to for if you have HND, if you have um, third class in the UK, you know that you can only do um, business courses and and they are slightly a little bit long, lengthy. They could be 12 months, they could be 15 months, they could be 16 months, depending on the school. And yeah, you know the documents you need to. Don't worry, it will be sent to you. Yeah, we'll, we'll send it to you on your DM. So, for the address in Abuja. Yes. So, 
So we we have documents that you need to provide, and like I said, degree certificates, notification of results, statement of results, official copy of your transcript, student copy of your transcript, updated CV. There's not two ways about it. Wyek Neko IELTS. Wyek Neko, please. Minimum of C6. Also. For now, there's no deadline for September. And upon the fact that there's no deadline for September, many schools are closing up. So it's not all schools bring out this ball of, They don't bring out this uh, notification that we are closing this. They just wake up and close. It's like that. Only a few of them are like, okay, we are closing. We stop applications all the time. But many of them just close like that. So everything they close by courses. Some schools don't just like some courses. We get few. They have the number of courses they need for a particular intake. Sorry, the number of people they need in a course in a department they particular into. So when they get to their capacity, they close. So that's how it works. So when they get to their what what they're satisfied with, they close that course. Then that course will be closed. So and people rush business courses like in Dumi. It's rushed because business courses, yes, it's sellable, it's easy. It's easy too. So I think you should take it. It's a good deal. Two minutes more. <laughs> oh, okay, so I mentioned the document we need, and please tune in next week Wednesday, same time, 12 p.m. Every Wednesday, 12 p.m. There's always one beautiful face, one handsome face that's packed with information for you to make life easy for you. That comes on the live to pass informations and updates for you so please always be in touch with us please every wednesday at 12 noon yes okay i just have one minute more. so one last question do you guys run applications for you? of course we run applications for university of hall but minimum of two two a minimum of c5 in Y. they don't take neko only way and ielts so for the Y, you have to have to have minimum of c5 in english in the Y. That's for University of Hope. Very affordable school. I'm not here to talk about those. So yes, we do applications for University of Hope. So uh so I'll say bye bye. My name is Choma. You can call me Counselor Choma. So it's just nice having you guys. So it's high nice uh, reading your comments and your questions. Thank you. Bye.